Well, good morning, and once again, welcome back to Captain Boat Builder. In this episode today, we're going to talk about installing the fillets and reinforcing the bow at uh, both ends. As you can see, I've tightened up all of the wires. This morning I went through and tightened up every single wire as tight as I thought it should be. The hull has become quite stiff just through the tightening of the wires. And now I've turned the boat over, and so the next step is to prepare for the filleting process. Now, one of the things about this process is how much time you spend on it and the aggravation that you go through just depends on what you want the final product to be. We've reached the stage now where everything in the boat Everything that you see on the inside is going to be covered with clear epoxy and with varnish. So every single mistake or every single discoloration is going to show. And so this is the point where I really slow down and try to be as careful as I can because I'm mindful of the idea that I want a beautiful finished product. For the filleting process, you can go online and there are quite a few examples of how to do it. There's uh, good examples on the Chesapeake Lightcraft site. And what I decided to do to avoid possible mistakes was I decided to practice. You can see here that I've glued two pieces of wood together at an angle that's uh, roughly similar to the angle of the bulkheads. And I'll zoom in here a little bit and you'll see two different techniques for filleting. On the right, this process was done using tape. I had nice uh, clean tape lines and I was using this PVC pipe which is uh, two and three eighths inch diameter and you can see how the pipe forms a nice smooth curve in the fillet at this approximate angle. If you look at this one you can see that this was done with the pipe with no tape so the edge is not quite so well defined. Uh, again, it just depends on how particular you want to be. Like we say, are you building a boat? Or are you building furniture? I'm trying to get these fillet lines as sharp as I possibly can. As we go up here into the bow, you can see that I've taped everything off. A lot of filleting is done freehand, and some people are very good at it. Uh, what I've decided is that I like the tape lines myself and I, I want a really sharp edge. One of the problems with the filleting process is that since you're using epoxy resin that has been reinforced with uh, wood flour, you're going to get a fillet that's going to be this color right here. So it's going to be very apparent. Uh, any wavy lines, any sloppiness, uh, it can only be remedied with a tremendous amount of sanding. And even though all this tape work that I did has actually taken me several hours, if you can believe it, I'm certain that it's going to save me a tremendous amount of time. We're going to start with the filleting process up here in the bow. If you look at this part of the boat, this is the extreme bow. You see down here where the planks all come together at the point, and also the back of this bulkhead. All of this is going to be filleted first, but it will never be seen. And so because of that, that's going to be my practice. And I'll be back with you uh, in another couple of hours to show you how that went. Well, I'm back with you now. A couple of hours have gone by. I've cut all of the copper wires on the outside carefully. I cut them uh, as close as I could to the wood. Uh, on the outside, remember, it's going to be covered with fiberglass. It's going to be painted and filled, and uh, so you don't have to be so careful with the wood. I tried to be very careful in cutting the wires completely on the outside so that they would pull through on the inside. And you can see here what these little holes look like after the wires are pulled. They're small, and they're very clean. 
Uh, what I'm going to be doing later, which may sound like insanity, we'll, we'll see if it works, is I'm going to experiment with uh, colored putty to fill these holes and sand them and then put a little bit of uh, resin over them to see if I can get a perfect match to essentially make them disappear. And I plan to do my practice work right up here in the bow on these tiny holes, which eventually will be completely covered so nothing will show. But I'm going to try that. Um, most people do not do that. They leave the holes open. And if you see how they're all in a line, they would almost be reminiscent of the fastenings that were applied to the interior ceiling planks in old boats and uh, nailed or screwed into the frames. So a lot of people just leave them the way they are. They're quite small, but they're noticeable. I did want to show you one thing that I've tried very hard to avoid. If you look right here, you can see where some resin from the outside, when the boat was upside down and I was sealing the edges of the planks, some resin actually came through. And even though I used quite a bit of thickener and tried to make sure that the planks were carefully sealed, I still got a little bit of the intrusion. Here's another little spot underneath one of the temporary bulkheads. This is what I mean when I talk about avoiding sanding. And so I will have to do just a little bit of sanding. Another reminder is when you're working on the inside of the boat now, if you're gonna finish it with epoxy and varnish, remember everything is going to show. So be very careful. I'll be back with you in a little while. I'm gonna be working now on continuing the gluing on the outside. Well, happy boat builders. I'm back with you. It's much later in the afternoon. This took a lot longer than I thought, uh, mostly because I was trying to get it right. I started by putting the filleting material in the forward sections. These, uh, the two bows are identical. And you can see that it's uh, kind of sloppy, but the important thing is to get enough filleting material in the joints to fill in the joint, especially in the very, very thin part of the bow and it takes a little time to sort of jam the filleting material which is epoxy thickened with wood flour to jam it up in there and to get it pretty solid all the way around. Uh, it took a while but it doesn't it does not require a lot of uh, careful work because as I say it's going to be closed up and you're never going to see it. Now the part that does take a lot of time is this part. This is the part that you're going to see. When the boat's finished, this area will all be covered with clear epoxy fiberglass cloth, which becomes clear when it's saturated with epoxy and varnish. The wood will get darker, but this uh, brown uh, material that is epoxy thickened with wood flour is going to be quite visible. And you can see that I've done the best that I could with the tape to try and get the lines nice and sharp. There will be a little bit of sanding required. Hopefully it won't be too much. The other end uh, I did second and I think this other end turned out just a little bit better. It requires quite a bit of practice. Uh, a couple of things that I noticed while I was doing this. As I mixed the epoxy I couldn't quite figure out how much to mix because I didn't want to waste anything. So I started with 20 pumps of the resin and 20 pumps of the hardener. And that gives me approximately enough to do the forward section here. This took 20 pumps of resin and hardener and enough wood flour to make it quite thick, almost like a paste. So I had 20 pumps in both ends, so that's 40. And then as I looked at this part of the boat, I thought, well, it's probably not gonna need quite as much. And so these parts, I did all of these separately. It was four separate operations. These parts took 18 pumps or maybe 17 pumps. So that's the amount of resin and hardener that you need to do each section. 20 for the bow sections that you can't see, and 17 or 18 for this section, which you can see. 
Another thing I'd like to point out is that when you're doing this, it's important to be sure that this area right here, this notch that's in the forward bulkhead, you can see this notch right here where my finger is. This notch needs to stay open. You don't want to have any epoxy in there. And the reason is that this right here, this is the outer rail. The inner rail goes right here next to it. Plywood is laminated in between. So be sure to clean those up so that you don't get resin in there or it's just going to be more sandy. But I'm... Uh, relatively pleased with the way this turned out. It took a lot more time than I expected, but again, because it's so visible, I wanted to try and do the best job that I could. So tomorrow, I'll be turning the boat over and I'll be putting epoxy, thickened epoxy, um, on all of these seams in preparation for taking out all of the wires. So this is my progress so far. It seems to be coming along quite well. And uh, I just keep uh, remembering that I've got this nice line drawing on the wall and I keep looking at it to keep myself encouraged and not get discouraged. So again, this is Captain Boat Builder signing off. Another episode in building the Sassafras 12. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.